Hi guys. Um, this video I'm going to try to document how I make a uh, small sandblasting cabinet. <clears throat> uh, you've seen a lot of videos on YouTube, I'm sure, on how to do this. Mine's not particularly new, but I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to try to integrate that blaster or that nozzle with this uh, DIY cabinet. So let's start with the lid. Um, the lid on this cabinet and the reason I chose this cabinet is because it has uh, these six latches so that gets really good pressure on the top. The lid is also sealed um, but you can't see through it not very well. So what I've decided is um, I'm going to cut this whole section out and put this sheet of uh, plexiglass in so that I can see well. Um, you might ask, well, why are you doing all this? Why not just buy a Harbor Freight uh, blasting cabinet? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, I, I actually want this cabinet to be small. Um, I have limited workspace. Um, I'm not going to be doing a lot. I'm going to be repairing a few small parts, uh, getting them ready for plating, which will be the next project. And when I'm done, I want to be able to easily store uh, the parts and the cabinet up there in the loft. <clears throat> so let's get started. I drew uh, a line roughly where I want to cut. I want to leave as much of this flange as possible but yet I still have to cut through here. Uh, the material is too thick for me to cut with an exacto knife or a, a hard edge. So I'm going to drill some holes in the corners and then I'm going to try to use my jigsaw with a very fine metal cutting blade. And if that doesn't work, uh, plan B will be a small cutoff wheel. On the inside because the inside part uh, is I'm not going to save it. The jigsaw. I'm going to try. I'm a little nervous that this thing is going to shatter into a million pieces, but um, let's try it. so bad. Can you guys see? More or less. big stuff out.
Now, <clears throat> I'll use this as a template to um, cut this. That may be easier to do it upside down. Okay, but I'll bring it back. I changed my mind. I'm not going to use uh, the the leftover cutout piece as the template because I need to be able to save uh, this flange mounting surface. So I'm going to try to make it as tight as I can. Uh, line it up pretty much on the edge and then I will um, I'll round this over. So I like straight lines. So yes, I was one of those kids that did not draw outside the lines in school. So we'll mark this out. Like that. not really sure what to cut the plexiglass with. Um, I'll try with this, using the same method with the jigsaw, though I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more brittle. So I'll try an edge first, and, uh, and then we'll see. Four corners will end up being rounded. Okay, so let me set it up for a cut and I'll show you how it goes. So I'm using the same um, fine tooth uh, metal cutting blade, and uh, this is where a bench with bench dogs would come in handy, but I guess this will work just as well. So let's see how it works. too fast, too hot, and so what ends up happening is uh, it melts it, and uh, as it cools, it welds itself back together. So let me see how, um, I have to redo that cut and maybe go a little bit slower. Didn't think about that. Turn this around, and uh, hmm. I'm gonna have to do it on this side so that it's supported. Try to get it as close to the edge as possible. Um, 
I had to take this uh, the protective sheet off of this side, so I'm gonna. I don't want to scratch it. I know it doesn't matter. It's gonna get scratched anyway. But let's not start early. slower but I think what I'm gonna end up having to do is cut it through and then go over it again it didn't crack okay so um, I'm gonna clean up this edge with something and uh, I'll bring you back I um, I cleaned up the edges with a sander uh, as much as I could and um, now let's see how this fits this is what I wanted. Tight through the uh, corners. I rounded the corners on the uh, on the sander also. Okay. This finger. There we go. Okay. So now, um, what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to drill some holes through this all the way around. Um, the other added benefit of this plexiglass is that it stiffens things up. We're going to be pumping this thing full of air. We are going to have an exhaust port, a filtered exhaust port, but this whole thing is going to try to, you know, balloon out. So we're going to try as best as we can to seal it up. Now, I don't want to put uh, silicone around here because I have a feeling, I mean, the reality is this is going to be a, a throwaway at the end of the day, at the end of its useful life. But in the case that I do want to replace this, I'm just going to put a little foam or rubber seal around this, uh, around the perimeter. And I'll show you the one that uh, I'm going to use. So here's the seal. Um, it's just whatever the cheapest one was at uh, in the aisle that I happen to be in at Home Depot or Lowe's. But it fits pretty well uh, the width of this flange. So I'm going to try as much as I can to, uh, to fit it up. And then we're going to drill holes through it and, um, and squeeze it down between this plexiglass and the flange. So I'm not going to bend it around the, the corner. We're just going to cut it and... Uh, just butt the two ends together. 
would help if I use the correct side. Like that. This uh, seal, I think, is a window window seal. Uh, I don't think it makes a difference. It is kind of a foam rubber. I've seen some open end or closed end, closed cell foam. Um, those seem like they were too spongy. Can you see? Uh, I would not spongy, but like they were either too big or too wide, or they were just foam. And I, I because I was going to squeeze this, I, I wanted it to be a little bit more robust. I don't know, maybe I'm overcomplicating this, but um, I don't, you know, the other option is to just do any sort of sandblasting outside, but I wanted to save the media as much as I could. Cut this at an angle. Um, and reuse it, and I don't I certainly can't have the dust in the garage. Um, so we'll see. You know, it is about discomfort anyway, at least in theory. Okay, so. No gaps. Um, we're gonna squish this down, drill through it, and uh, I'll bring you back as we start doing that. Here, this is what I intend to use. Um, screw on the top and then a nut on the bottom. And I'm using a 964 bit. So um, let me get a backing pad on this just so I can prevent any sort of cracking. I'm using uh, number six three quarter inch screws, machine screws, uh, a little nut and bolt. My idea is to go screw on the top, bolt on the bottom. Um, I don't have any washers. I probably should have gotten some, but whatever. Uh, and a nine sixty fourths bit. So I want to make sure that this is aligned so that once um, I start cranking down on those little screws, I have enough room uh, to actually close it. So we'll give it a go here. Let's start the first one. And we're going to go right through the seal too. Okay. We'll put that in all the way. And then screw it down. Yeah, that's going to work out really nice. So, at least the first one did. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Here's a mistake. I forgot to peel the um, protective layer off. It won't be the only mistake I've made today. I'd spare you all the screwing and drilling, um, but I've seen a few videos, various videos on random stuff with so many time lapses that I'm just not going to do it. I'd rather cut it and, um, and then bring you back. So. I'm going to drill one here in the center. 
I'm going to drill one here in the center. That way I can work my way out. I don't want to do the corners first because I'm afraid there might be a little bit of a wave. So I know, I know, I'm overthinking it, but. So I'll continue this and bring you back when I've got all of them done uh, because it will take a while because I intend to do a lot of these. Why? Why not silicone? Well, maybe it would have been a good idea. Um, certainly easier, but I didn't want to have to wait. So. I'll bring you back. I'm finishing up. I think this will be the last hole for the last fastener. And I'll show you why I didn't record all of them. <laughs> because I may have overkilled it a little bit. Um, but that's okay. Um, so let me finish these two, and then I'll show you, we'll go around and, and take a look and see if the ceiling looks good. And an observation of what I might do differently, or what I might modify still. So hold on a second. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, plenty of screws all around. Um, the seals, or the seal, Looks pretty good. I have uh, good compression in most places where I don't. I might add, I might add another screw or two, but I think for the most part it looks pretty good. Um, what I might do, this is the back side of it. What I might do is add a strip that goes along here. But here's the thing. I don't want to lose these ribs. These ribs uh, add a lot of structure. So I think I'm just going to leave it uh, and go go with it as is. So you can see this is the seal that comes on the, uh, on the unit itself. Um, and hopefully it's a good one. If not, I have more of the window seal that I can use. So this is what this is. Uh, let me show you what the plan is, I guess. Set you down. So, this is in our open piece. Let's review the plan. So, first, make sure it latches. So that's that. That works well, like so. Um, the next step is these are four inch uh, toilet flanges. My hand goes through here relatively well. And uh, I'm going to install them here. And I will fasten them using the same sort of screws. Um, I'm not sure. I may end up sealing around here, uh, but there's a little bit of a 
spot for a gasket or something. I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm going to use the silicone. I really don't want to use silicone. Okay. Um, so one here, one here. Then this flange, it's also a toilet flange, sorry, this flange, um, slightly different type. Um, this one, here's the plan for this one. This one I'm going to put on the inside facing out so that the tube is outside. This allows me at some point in the future, if this, if I need to, um, I can hook up my shop vac here. Um, but what I really want is um, I have some of these, uh, these are called vent filters, I guess. They're relatively, well, they're very cheap. It was like 12 pack for three bucks at Lowe's. And um, you put them on your, your vents. They're relatively high flowing, if you will, but the idea is to do that or that or somehow so that I prevent media from uh, escaping. We have to equalize the pressure in here, right? You can't pressurize this cabinet. Um, and so we're going to try to find the, the right level of ventilation um, and prevent this from getting pressurized. It's going to be hard enough to see, uh, but hopefully that works. So next step is to cut the arm holes and this vent hole, and then we'll tackle the, uh, the actual feed system. I've decided where the holes are going to be. The center of both of these holes is four inches up and four inches from the side. I'll try to get you a view. <clears throat> Basically, um, that gives that about lined up. Yeah. That gives enough area around to uh, around on the flange to mount into the container. Okay, um, and lastly, I suppose I forgot, but I need to pick a spot for the vent and um, back probably is a good spot somewhere around here I'm guessing my compressors in that corner so this is going to be done here on the workbench I'm going to have the compressor line coming this way so yeah, feed will be somewhere here on the right, and the exhaust I'll kind of put somewhere around here. Let's see what that would look like. I said I wanted this on the outside, so that would be about like that. Yep, I think that'll work. Cut the holes. This one's mounted. Uh, that one's mounted temporarily, and now I'm going to put the, uh, the same seal on the back of this flange under the screws. Like I said, I really want to try to avoid using silicone because I don't know. I uh, I don't want to buy any. <laughs> I don't have any, and uh, I've got the seal, so I'm going to stretch it as much as I can to make it fit. So let me put it on, and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what the uh, the seal looks like on the flange. Self-adhesive, so it stays. Uh, but once there's pressure on it from the fasteners, it should be okay. Let's put it on. I already see something else that I'm going to have to do. The base of this uh, box isn't very sturdy. And so I'm guessing I'm probably going to need to put a sheet of uh, <clears throat> plywood and just screw to it from the, from the inside. Um, so that if I drop something heavy, a heavier part or an edge of a part, it doesn't break through it because cleaning that up would suck. Alright, let me put the, uh, the nuts on the back and I'll bring you right back.
right back. Um, everything, all the big stuff is mounted. So got the gasket between everything, um, including here. Unfortunately, I cut this hole a little bit big, but I still have enough of a seal. <clears throat> so that's okay. So the next thing is um, I'm going to get the siphon system out and figure out how that's going to get inserted in there. Alright guys, well today is tomorrow and the next day, so here's my update. Um, filter element is still to be put in, but that's the exhaust. Here are the hand access parts. I have not yet fully installed these. These are gloves I got at Home Depot. I think they're like three or four bucks. I don't know if they're going to work very well. Um, might be a little short. Um, I might get a couple more inches of hand access out of it. We'll see. This is how I plumb the air line. Um, I wanted it to be nice and tight, so I had... These are all fittings I had, so... If I didn't have these, I probably would not have purchased them. Um, but I thought this would be a good way to do it. So I've got a quick connect here so that I can take the hose off if I need to. It goes through like so. And then this section will connect to my airline. Okay. So that's relatively simple. Uh, as far as hand access, this is how much I have. I can hold here and move this around. Um, I can't really articulate my hand too far forward. Um, this joint that I had, this 90 degree swivel, definitely helps things uh, so that the hose doesn't move around. I think that's a, a good thing. So the last thing to do is to make another make another hole for the sand feed hose the sand feed hose is this one and I had a couple of these um, one inch PVC fittings so here's what I'm thinking I think I'm gonna drill a hole here and um, basically sandwich um, the case in there, feed this through, and stuff this, stuff that full of a filter element so that um, so that nothing comes out. So I'm going to do that and uh, wrap it up, so to speak, and uh, fill this up. I may end up putting. I didn't really think about it too much, but now that I think about it, um, I'm going to be spraying with my right hand. And I should have put that here so that I'm not spraying so much uh, directly onto the uh, onto the filter side. So, but anyway, we'll try it out, see how it goes. Uh, I'll cut this short here. I'm gonna put it all together, and uh, you guys will see the first test run next. So, as far as I'm concerned, she's all done but the tryout. Uh, let me show you what this whole thing looks like. So <clears throat> this is a Ziploc container. Got it at Lowe's. Uh, there's what that is. There's the air fitting and then there's the feed line for the sand. <clears throat> Plexiglass uh, view on the top. This is a Harbor Freight, um, I think they call it a portable sandblasting kit. There's that. Um, the reason I wanted this one versus the individual ones with the hopper attached is that I, uh, I may want to do a little bit of a longer stint. I tried the little ones, you know, the ones that have uh, the ones that have a knot or a the hopper up at the top, and you get about I don't know. I was able to get about a minute of use, and then had to stop and refill. So I think that's super annoying. But maybe it was my air pressure or something. I don't know. Um, so here's 
in summary, these are two um, fittings for a toilet, and then the third one back here. I simply used uh, tape and taped some uh, heavy gloves that I had on both sides. Um, I get enough of a reach, not too much. I could use a longer glove, but I wouldn't really get that much more um, reach because this opening here, my forearm doesn't fit all the way. You know, I can get a, not quite to my elbow, which is enough. This, uh, this fitting here serves as a vent. Remember, we're going to be pressurizing this compartment so air has to escape. Um, I just stuffed um, this stuff um, in there, like so. And on this surface here, I tested it to 50 PSI and had good airflow. Um, you could definitely tell that the um, that the whole compartment gets pressurized because looking at it kind of this way, the lid would you know rise a little bit, or at least it would bow slightly, but not tremendously. So um, here, <clears throat> let's take another look. I used a one inch PVC fitting just to pass uh, pass this through. This this is the only part that I don't like so far. I might try to find a solution that's a quick connect because if I want to remove this, I don't want to be pulling this hose in and out. The hose is kind of sealed. I just stuffed some of the filter material in here. Air passes through, uh, which is fine, but ideally, uh, not ideal. Uh, the quick connect fitting works great. So this is the air feed line from my compressor. And then on the other side, let me turn you around here. On the other side, I have another quick connect so that I can uh, remove this hose should I need to. And then this is a fitting I had from other applications. It's just a 90 degree and swivel. So it really helps. Um, with the manipulation of the nozzle inside the container because the hose is relatively stiff so the hose stays curled around like this as you're working so that's about it um, let me button it up and show you uh, with it closed <clears throat> And then um, in the next video, because this one's already gone long, in the next video I will show you um, how it works. It works quite well. And I will be cleaning off some uh, Wagoneer parts like this. Um, I already wire brushed this, but uh, there's plenty of material to be cleaned. Uh, this is a door striker, door catch from that. So in preparation for uh, zinc plating and yellow chromating. So that'll be the next step. Um, hope this was helpful and uh, sorry if it went a little long but um, I wanted to document at least for myself how I did it. And if nothing else it was fun to do. Um, the total cost, um, let's see, about six bucks per fitting, so that's times three, that's 18, about $14 for the bin, and uh, about, I think it was $25 for the sandblasting kit, which I used the 20% thing off. Um, I already had the, um, the air, um, air hose and the fittings. Um, if I was to buy those, honestly, it probably would have been just as easy to buy one that was pre-made, but since I had a lot of the uh, small parts, I figured I'd try it on my own. So, all told, I would say about 65 bucks. Um, the plexiglass sheet was also not inexpensive. I think that was $19 at Lowe's. So, I hope that's helpful. Um, 
feel free to ask any questions or make any recommendations. Um, I don't do a lot of video editing, <laughs> as you guys can tell, but um, I've learned a lot from YouTube, and a lot of people have great content. I don't aspire to that. This is just uh, um, a couple extra minutes for me to put together and document the work that I've done. So hope you enjoy, and uh, have a good night.